Eve. Welcome back to another episode of Banging with me, Chloe Veach, your host. I am really excited to introduce my guest today. However, before we start, I am going to remind you, little sugar dumplings, to follow our TikTok and our Instagram on Banging with Chloe V Pod. I am absolutely loving the comments and the, the DMs for advice on Instagram. So if you do have a dilemma, you do have a toxic relationship, that you think, do you know what, I want a bit of advice, then please slide into my DMs, okay? You have got my absolute consent. Just don't send dick pics, please. Okay, so I am going to introduce the guest that we have today. She is profoundly known for being herself, being a boss bitch on TikTok. And if you don't know her, get to know her. It's Izzy Oakley, everyone! <laughs> Woo! Hello. Hello. How are you? Not too bad, how are you? That was a great intro. Well, look, my head is too big for this room anymore, so. Oh, good. I mean, I'll I'll be your personal hype girl, I don't mind. (laughs) Thank you so much. (laughs) You look stunning. Thank you. Uh, I look like a drowned rat. Don't be silly. (laughs) I've literally, do you know what? Every time someone says, don't be silly, this is going off topic. I remember, it takes me back to the time when my brother was in primary school. Mm. And he'd done a project on sex education, right? It's actually a true story. Um, he had to do a presentation of why and what safe sex is and why we have to do safe sex. Right. And he created a rap. Okay. And it started with, don't be silly, rap your willy. Right. So every time now someone ever says, don't be silly, I'm like, rap your willy Thinking in my head. Jurex. Yeah. Yeah. Well, then again, there's worse things to come to mind. So, yeah. yeah. Safe sex is don't definitely be silly, not a bad one. Or, yeah, I don't know, catch the clap. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, we have a banging or a bust section when we first get into the podcast. So before we get into the, the deep and the juicy questions that we really want you to answer, um, we ask you, what is banging from your week and what is bust from your week? Okay. Shall I start with the good news or the bad news? Oh, we want the bad. Okay, so... I just came back from Ibiza. Okay. Right. Loved it. I've been there a few times in the last few months. Apparently, every influencer trip has to be in Ibiza this year. I'm not against it. I'm not against it at all. Okay. Well, I have been there now five times. <gasps> well, this year? <laughs> yeah. In the past however many like months? three, two months. <gasps> two, three months. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, I've, I've, I'm basically, you know, Ibiza resident at this You've point. You've completed it, mate. Yeah. 100%. Um, again, could be worse problems to have, but that's not what the bust is, right? So I went there with this brand. We sat down, we had a lovely meal. It probably second day in. So I was with no one I knew okay. at all. It was just me and a few other girls that were also on the same trip, influencers, whatever, content creators. We went to this beautiful restaurant in Ibiza. Everything was scenic. The trees, the chairs, you couldn't make it up. It was Chef's gorgeous. Kiss. Yeah. Little Chinese fusion menu. Ooh. Wow. Tropical. In, that's what I'm saying. I'm <laughs> invested. I love me a Chinese. Even when I'm glammed up, I'm there. So look, I order my usual. I make, If anyone's not aware, I have allergies to food. Okay. Right. As you can tell, this is about where it's going to go wrong. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I said to this person as soon as I get in, the waitress, sorry, this person, waitress, as soon as I got in, babe, I've got allergies. I understand there is a little bit of a language barrier. They so can try kill to, me, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you no, need to understand me. Deadly allergies. Um, <laughs> so I was like, yeah, shellfish, nuts, they're the big bad ones. Let's just make sure nothing's on the menu. And then she had me the menu and was like, here you go. And I said, how do I know what's got nuts in? And she said, you just order. And I'll tell you, I thought, go on then, treat me. So I order as per usual. I keep it very safe. Okay. I get some little dumplings for a starter. Okay. And then I get a crispy duck because who doesn't oh, like crispy I love duck? A crispy duck. Agreed. And I think safe bet. When have I ever, huh, foreshadowing, found a nut on duck pancakes? Oh no. <laughs> you think? Right. Oh no. Start comes out, it's got a suspicious sauce on it. I'm thinking, is it peanuts? Could be. Ate it anyway, was fine. Fuck it. I did let her know though, I was like, this is definitely not peanuts. She was like, nope, don't worry. 
Next dish comes out. A few other people ordered the, the duck as well, right? So it starts being put on the table. I see it's absolutely lathered in cashews for no reason. Oh, fuck off. Yeah, little decorative cashew. Cashew, cashew nut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the need? There was no need. When have, it, when have I gone, oh, you know what I want with this crispy duck? A fucking cashew. Yeah, no, I know. No one's ever done that. And it could kill me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it comes out. She puts it down. I go, no fucking way. Can you please take this back? Obviously, I didn't actually say that. I was like, sorry. Really sorry. It's really gonna sorry. kill me though. Um, I would die. Um, so I gave it back to her and I said, "Can you please like remake it? Do not scrape it off. Whatever you do, oh my god, do not scrape it off." So she scraped it off, um, bought it back, but oh. it was a very low lit restaurant. You're outside. They got these weird little lamps that you tap on them, so you couldn't see the residue. Couldn't see. And then I just I was one and a half pancakes deep, and then this nut just rolls into the center of like a little, yeah. So I was like, "Oh dear." I immediately get up. I turn Ooh, into dear. I turn into Usain Ooh. Bolt. I'm sprinting to the toilet. Trigger warning to anyone with uh, any is it a metaphobia? I think it's metaphobia. Yeah. So I had to make myself sick. Basically, I was in this toilet, full glam, heels, long oh, dress, no. fingers down the back of my throat, absolutely going for it. I was like, my gag reflex is far too good for this. I can't, I can't throw up. It's really what hard a for fucking me. blessing. To I know. Have. It's so, well, you say well. that until you've got an allergy. And you're like. <laughs> too many penises down my throat for this like but. i can't i'm too well experienced but anyway <laughs> so i was going in and nothing was coming up i was panicking i was like ha. what finally, did you call well i finally i threw up because i looked to the back of the toilet and i thought how many people have shot here? i need to just have a look at the skin yeah and maybe yeah, that yeah. will make me exactly. sick exactly i was thinking how filthy is this toilet just remind yourself constantly and then you'll be sick and works every time yeah i agree it actually does so anyway i come out i'm now fuming my real south london roots come through the, my soul. The ghetto yell comes yeah. out. I've not only chucked up the duck pancakes, I've, re, I've regurgitated the South London ghetto from my soul. And I'm coming out steaming like this. And I go to this waitress, I'm like, I don't know what you've just done, but I told you about six times I cannot eat nuts and you've fed me nuts. And this is like a deadly allergy. It escalates. I'm like, you know what? You've ruined everyone's meal. So I think we should just have the whole meal for free. Like in the UK, you get sued for that and shut down. But I'm like, not going to sue you. Just, yeah, just give like, me some pancakes. I haven't got the energy for what that. I'm here to go Ashwire. Not to go to fucking legal team. There's no way. Yeah. I was like, look, just give the meal free. Everyone's had to stop eating. We've got to leave now. So no one's eaten anyway. Yep. Like, well, obviously I said that a bit more south and a bit more road. But essentially yeah. I said that. And then these managers came out, right? Oh, no. Well, actually, I think they were the owners, but it escalated again. Starts going very beefy, and he goes, she can die. <gasps> yeah. Just walks in, goes, she can die. I was like, I'm like twitching, full blown, like ready to just throw up. I mean, no, that could, could have killed you. you no, know, it actually could have. Like, I mean, my throat did swell up a bit because I had to regurgitate the nuts. So wow. luckily, I didn't have a Do you carry an EpiPen? Or? EpiPen, right. um, antihistamines, the right. lot. But... Either way, anyway, he claimed to call the police. We were like, they haven't called the police. We left. They had someone follow us. It was really weird. They what? Had someone follow you? And he claimed that I ate it all and then complained. <gasps> like, he was like, she ate it all. She said to this man following us that I'd eaten it all. We do this everywhere. Like, I'd never met these people before. I met them the day before. And they claimed that this is a whole scam that we did every time we go to Ibiza. Oh, my fucking God. Pun not intended, but it was nuts. Oh! Wow, yeah. I think that is the the most horrifying bust in history yeah. on banging. On the upside, I can give you a, a banging. Give me a banging. I have come off a man ban. A what? A man ban. It's a big thing on my page. Okay. Where I tell all the girls just going to man bans. Right. Men are trash. Obviously. Fucking teach me. Yeah. So essentially, it's just avoid all men. Believe you are so amazing that no one will ever deserve you. Okay. Once you get into that headspace. For how long now? Well, for me, it's been like a solid, at least six months now. Fuck. Yeah. A man ban. A man ban. So you were celibate. Pretty much, yeah. Pretty much, as well, in you had a couple of slip-ups. Look, yeah, but they weren't, they weren't, to be fair, they actually weren't recent. Mm, eh, not recent enough, not recent. Okay. I'm, I have, I avoided it all costs. If it spontaneously happened, it would. Then it's just, yeah. But they wouldn't be someone that I was seeing. They'd just be like, oh, fuck it, why not then? Go on. And well, they were always just, disappointed. Just put it in. But yeah. I am on a man ban. Yeah. Just to let you know. Yeah, like, I don't want to ever talk to you again. Yeah. Yeah, we're not friends. Like, go away. Just... 
fill the hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they always did it badly, so it was never worth it. It was never it breaking. It doesn't count then. Yeah, I count. agree. Basically, you're still a virgin. So why did you go mm. on a man ban? I have the most horrific past oh with my men. God. Right. Okay. I have the worst tasting men known to man. Same. High five. I think the first one started when I was 18. Had okay. A very, well, uh, he was a lot older than me. Okay. I say a lot older. He was in his mid 20s and I was freshly 18. Okay. So it was old enough that we definitely shouldn't have been seeing each other. Okay. He took my V plates, lost my virginity at 18. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. I Fucking myself. hell. I know. I, I think for me, I didn't lose it earlier because I just didn't like anyone. <laughs> I was a right slag. But, but I don't blame you. I just, in school, I was just such a nerd. I just wasn't bothered. I was mm. just, boys were not my thing. Yeah. And then I came to college and I was like, oh, hello. Penis. Uh, excuse me? Mum, don't watch this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mum. Sorry, mum. <laughs> it's not for you. It's not for your ears. Yeah, I was just like, oh, fuck it. It wasn't really my thing. And then I, as soon as I turned 18, got a boyfriend, whatever. Mm -hmm. He was just abusive in every way, shape or form. But it mm -hmm. was a short relationship, so... Luckily, you got out of it. Out of it, very. I got a dog from it, so you know, small wins. Amazing. Yeah. Next one, he. We were together a year and a half. This was just before we broke up. Just before, well, in COVID, at the beginning of okay. COVID. Um, and he cheated on me and caught chlamydia. Yeah, and tried to give me the chlamydia because he wanted tried to, sleep. to give you it. Yeah, because he wanted me to sleep with him. But I had an instinct that I he was thrown, yeah because I was thrown up for three months because <gasps> I knew he was cheating on me. So you had this, yeah. and I believe in this, right? I believe in this. I am preaching to every fucking listener, right, to the banging crew, if your gut tells you something, listen to it. Anyway, so that was the second one. The third one was my lockdown love. I'm so sorry. We're just going to backtrack a little bit. Yeah, backtrack so, away. Just so I can visualise it. <laughs> Not visualise yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, But just so I can see it. So you were with this guy for how long? A year and a half. Okay, so it's this fucking serious relationship. Yeah, 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 so you were yeah. in a serious relationship with someone. Yeah. Um, he, you had a gut instinct. He was cheating on you. Yeah. You kind of knew, so you didn't sleep oh, with I him. No, I didn't sleep with him. I just, I didn't even want to. My okay. body was literally just against him. Did at all you costs. have a conversation with him and kind of say to him, "Listen, I feel like." No, I tell no. you why, because I was so convinced he couldn't possibly ever do that. He was a SoundCloud rapper who didn't work. And was literally beneath me in every way, shape. Or, he begged for me to date him for two years. Like, oh, I thought, no. there's no way you're just overreacting. In my head, I was like, you are just mental. Yeah. And we are, as women, accustomed to believe we are overreacting to everything. Yeah, because we're pushed by men sometimes, not all men, to think Most in a of. way that <laughs> I'm a psycho. But oh, actually, yeah, am 100%. I? Yeah, yeah, And before that... Well, before that, I was very chilled. I was probably one of the most chilled girlfriends ever. I'd be like, go out, do whatever, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Like, as long as you send me a text once every few hours, I know yeah. you're alive, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah, after that, it didn't really... So you didn't sleep with him. Mm-mm. And how long was you in the relationship for you to not sleep with him? Oh, I think I stopped sleeping with him about four months before we broke up. Wow. And he had a conversation with me at one point and was basically like, I need you to sleep with like, me. Like, why aren't you having yeah, sex yeah, with yeah. me? Yeah. Did was, you explain your reasons why? Yeah, I just, I was like, I'm really just not, like, I can't make myself do that because that is then a touchy subject. Like, that's borderline sexual assault. Mm -hmm. You know, even more strong words. You know, I was I don't want to sleep with you. Yeah. I can't force myself to do that. Yeah. If we're not supposed to sleep together, we're not, we're not going to do that. Um, and then he tried to convince me that that's why he was cheating on me. I was like, no, no. You've done it way before then. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So when did the chlamydia come into play? So was did the girl message you and say, by the way, I've slept with your boyfriend? Was it a known fact? that The story to find out is even better, right? So I oh. was on a family quiz Zoom night Fuck during off. COVID. Right? I had one of them. Oh, Strongly recommend. Well, to be fair, mine was all right. I'd actually met some of the family members I hadn't met before. So okay. it was quite sweet um, until I realised he was a monumental cunt. He ruined it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, I come off this family Zoom. I was like, oh, that's funny. Ha ha, very sweet, very wholesome, whatever. I get a message through on Instagram from two RuPaul's Drag Race stan accounts, right, like fan pages, in a group chat. I thought... What? <laughs> First of all, you, this is really odd. And they were like, your boyfriend cheated on you. And I was so, I was so convinced, like, this guy could never cheat on me. Like, if you ever yeah. saw this boy, okay. you'd understand. Like, this, right. yeah, no. There's okay. no way he could ever cheat on me. Like, no way. Like, he would be... He was obsessed. He'd chased obsessed. you for two years. I paid for his whole life. Like, yeah. everything he needed, I did. So yeah. I'm like, hello. Anyway, regardless, 
that not that, that should be the case for a man not to cheat on you, but anyway. No, but what would be his reason? Yeah, You're exactly. providing everything that you can as a woman. Exactly. So and probably a man. <laughs> and more. <laughs> and so more. why? Exactly. So, yeah, anyway, I laughed it off. I said, lol, please don't make me laugh, whatever. Um, I was like, if he claimed to do what he did, send me some evidence. Straight away, they <gasps> sent me an iMessage chat with his no. picture. Which at first I was like, oh, they could have staged this. Yeah. So I ring him. I immediately bell his line. I'm like, there's no way. Um, Some RuPaul Drag Race fan page it, has just, how crazy does that the sound? Joke. I know, that's, the, that's exactly what he said. I, I was literally laughing. I was like, so you won't believe this. I'll go to Cracker. Um, right. Uh, so this is, and he was like, yeah, so I did cheat on you. I was like, so he admitted it off the bat? Yeah, yeah, off the bat. Oh, okay. And after I was sending these people muggy messages, like, lol, no, I didn't. Like, no. Yeah, they were like, he was like, yeah, no, I did. And I and they started crying, obviously, because he feels guilty for having a rotten penis. Uh -huh. But on the text message, it basically said, oh, yeah, you need to tell your girlfriend you're cheating on her because you have the clap. Like, I've got it, so you've definitely <gasps> got it. So you found out that he had chlamydia... Through someone else. Through someone else because he cheated on you. Yeah. And he was trying to sleep with you. Yeah. Even when you didn't want to sleep with him. Yeah. Did he know he had the club? Well, he must clearly, have known. yeah. The messages were not brand new. Oh, they were at least, my God. They were at least a few days old. So he tried, or not even tried, but persisted yeah. to try and give you chlamydia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's but he come? knew he was sleeping with someone else, so the risk is there regardless. Like... And this is where it comes into play. Don't be silly. Wrap your willy. I agree. Yeah, wrap everything. It should be the national anthem. I agree. I, they need to scream that in schools more, to be honest. Fuck's sake. Yeah. So you've been through it? Yeah, oh, God. And then the one after that was just as bad as well. Oh, my God. So I found the one at my lockdown love. We were together 11 months, but it's very intense because we um, were with each other every day. We're in lockdown. Yeah, he wasn't working because most people weren't, whatever. I spent every day together. He started dating me before I had followers. And then by the end of us breaking up, I obviously had a platform and whatever. He never wanted his face in anything. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, okay. protect his privacy. I'm not yeah. going to force him to do anything he don't want to do. Um, and then... We broke up. I knew, again, gut instinct. I knew it was up to something. I never had any evidence for it, but I knew something was up. Okay. We, a few months after that, we agreed to be neutral. We see each other out a lot. Like, we're civil. Even, like, nearly became friends. Okay. Nearly could be friends. Wow. Not even friends with benefits. Didn't see that de-escalated quickly. Yeah. We neutralised the whole situation. Then, a few months ago, when we are friends... I get a message from a girl basically saying, when you were together, I was with him for eight months of your relationship. We were only together 11 months. <sighs> so he was apparently having a whole affair with her. And is there any evidence to back this yeah. up? Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, oh, God, yeah, there was a so lot. So surely this is, like, this is traumatising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> like, when, when, because obviously this also comes off the back of man ban. Yeah. Because it's like, hang on a second... I've been through previous relationships where I've been royally fucked over. I've, I've sat in pain. Yeah. I've had to experience all this external messages mm -hmm. and toxicness. And the reason why you're like, right, I'm, gonna, I'm having a man bam. Yeah. Is so you can kind of regenerate yourself. Yeah. Charge your battery up a little bit more. Yeah, get a bit of self-worth. Yeah, without sounding like a hippie, I needed to find myself. Yeah, good. I literally needed to go on this journey of without having to rely on someone else mm -hmm. to be there. Mm. And I feel like my last two relationships were so back to back, I didn't yeah. actually have time on my own. Yeah, Like I didn't have time to go, right, process what the fuck has just happened. Mm. <laughs> I just thought, well, I don't have to process it if I fill the void. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. What, what could go wrong? Fill the void Yeah, and um, what could possibly go wrong? Yeah, it's better to fill the void yourself rather than to try and find the next man to do that for yeah, you. Yeah, definitely. Unless that void your vagina and then in which case Get wrap your willy filled. and then you're all good. Exactly. Yeah. Just don't be spreading chlamydia. Yeah, Fuck. please, God. Jesus no Christ. Luckily, I've scaved STDs my whole life. Never had one. Okay, same. No, same. Literally, like, yeah. praise the Lord. Yeah. Um. So, like, are you speaking to anyone at the moment? Or yeah. so this is the reason why the man ban has ended. Yeah. Okay. So I have now ended the man ban okay. because I think I believe I have overcome the trauma. Mm -hmm. My hair's now. A very dark brown. It was blonde about two weeks ago. Listen, if ever in doubt, dye your hair. Dye your hair. I agree. 
That's what I said. I said to my hairdresser, we, me and her are tight. Tight as anything now. And I was like, look, this is it. This is the last step. Mm-hmm. We need to do it. We need yeah. to do something. So we did. And I thought, I've and moved out. Happened. Yeah. New I'm man. a new woman and a new man. Yeah. Yeah. So with previous experiences that you've encountered in the past in regards to like toxic relationships and mm-hmm. being cheated on, would you class yourself as someone that's like healed from that and is now moving on? Or like most of us, like me, I tend to carry stuff from past relationships into my present relationships mm-hmm. in terms of, right, am I asking to check his phone? Am I, because I've seen a couple of videos that you posted on TikTok, um, kind of in jest saying like, oh, um, he needs, I need to make sure his, his Instagram or his location's on, like yeah. stuff like that. Do you feel like because you've been through so much in your past that maybe you're covering your own ass now by implementing boundaries of, with new men definitely you have to have boundaries though otherwise mm. you will just get exploited time and time again exactly i don't think it's possible to ever fully heal i don't think it's possible mm. in between relationships not carry some form of trauma because if you're saying right i'm completely man banned until mm. i'm absolutely fine that in itself is you carry on a form of trauma I turn into mary yeah i agree you're not opening yourself up to new opportunities and mm. you're actually walling off people that may really change your outlook mm. so that's what my mentality is now it's like right i did have time on my own yeah. Well, I can't be on my own forever. Exactly, yeah. And also, I do want that cl- classic thing, like when I was five, I wanted to be married by 21. You know? Oh, fuck, yeah, same. Yeah, we all wanted that. <laughs> We're like, I'm going to be really mature and grown up by 20. I'm going to be married by 25. Yeah, obviously not the case. Fuck's sake. But you're absolutely right. I mean, there is one thing that I stick to, which is ignorance is bliss. Okay. And I think with the phone password stuff, like, I wouldn't want to know. No. Like, if, they, if they're that confident to just pass me their phone for what, like, I can change the song on Spotify, I'll do it. Cool. Yeah. I won't overstep the boundary there yeah. because they also have boundaries too. Of and I, I need to understand that although I have lost my trust in many people, that that's not their fault. Mm-hmm. But I think we all need to remember that. Us as women, we all do the yeah. same. We're all awful, really. But then they've made us this way. So it's kind of like, what do you expect it's from back me? and forth. Yeah. Who fucking created the system? Yeah. And they're, some of them are just as bad, to be fair. Yeah. They're like, what's your phone password? I don't know. I how I'm much? dyslexic with numbers. Yeah, I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> How much does it cost? I know. You know, I'll um, think about it. Yeah. I think it's... Uh-huh. Uh, murder, murder. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. That. But, yeah, I do think, like, you're right. I think there are there is trauma still there. Mm-hmm. But the, the hope is that we always find that one person that will make you feel like you want to be open again to it. You know, let them walls down. And I think the main thing that I will take out of what you've just said and and what you've experienced, like, sorry you had to go through that, by the way. It's fucking awful. Um, You you took yourself out of the situation and you didn't fix or codepend on anyone else. Mm. You were literally just like, do you know what? I've been back to back in relationship. It's fucking me up, irritating my soul. I need a bit of space Mm. to recoup, to build myself back up and then chuck myself back in again. And I think that's really important to kind of, for people that are listening, that if you are ever going through anything like this and if you're in a toxic relationship and like you're, you're thinking to yourself, I'm never going to get over this. Or like, you know, when a man says to you, you're never going to find anyone better than me. Listen, my ex that I was talking to, I ended it with him. And he said to me, he went, Chloe, why would you chuck it away? Like, he even said with his own mouth, I love you more than your family. We'd been dating three months. And I was just like... Don't believe the bullshit. No, you don't. Like, and it was for me to say, no, actually, you don't love me more than my family. Um, yeah, a bit of a red flag. But yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know where I'm going with this. But even if you feel like you are never going to find someone else, you always will. Yeah, 100%. And I think you're better off, you know, having that time to yourself. Mm. To know what you actually want. Yeah. Because now I've, I've left that. I was like, what do I actually want? What's Six inches. T- yeah. Six At to eight inches, please. Minimum. Yeah. Minimum. And I also was like, my types changed a bit, I think, because they put me off so much mm-hmm. and they all look pretty similar. Yeah. I was like, I really don't fancy any of you anymore. 
Oh, but fuck. I have a friend called Georgia, and Georgia is like the polar opposite to me. She is so detached from the male species. She does not give a fuck. She Georgia. Will, oh, she doesn't do social media. Oh, okay. It's just my friend Georgia. She um she basically will fuck anyone and be like, yeah, cool. She'll literally spud them. Oh my god, that's off. like me. I had sex with one of my friends, a guy, and I high fived him. Yeah, yeah. That's what she's, and I actually love her for it because I'm like, mm. I want to be like that, but I'm mm. too emotionally involved. You're like Nicole. Right. On the first episode of this podcast, Nicole said exactly the same thing. Yeah. Basically, we love talking about sex on this podcast. So I'm going to dive in a little bit. Of course. With some of the questions. Um, basically, I've admitted, hand on heart, I recycle exes. All right. Yeah. Quite a few people I've spoken to on the podcast are like, yep, I do the same thing. However, your situation is a little bit different mm -hmm. because you've been through toxicness in your past. Mm -hmm. Do you ever hook up with toxic exes because you missed the dick? No. Never? I, talking stages, possibly, mm -hmm. but not actual exes. All okay. my exes can burn. Okay. Yeah, and Inhale. not give me a burning fanny. Yeah. Yeah. <gasps> Fuck yeah. Yeah. Oh, getting yeah, no, the yeah. The, pff, no. Fuck. I wouldn't go back there. But I just wouldn't bother. I think mm -hmm. there's too many other vulnerable penises out there. Why would I go back for the same mouldy one that's got a bit of clap? Like, there's no point. Yeah. yeah. It's all about the fresh dick. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Someone who knows how to clean the foreskin. I know. I need, to, oh, I need to learn something. I need to learn some things from you because yeah. that is my downfall. I mean, it's easy when it's accessible, right? I just don't even want to access it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you probably could get a McDonald's over a Gaucho's, but what would you prefer? Exactly. Mm. McDonald's? Depends on the day. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> So have you got, because I, I also reset, I've just talked to your TikTok, and um, you said you have three tips mm -hmm. on how to get over someone that has cheated on you. Right. What are those three tips? Oh, that is an old video, that. <sighs> okay. One of them. I mean, things change. So yeah. if you were to, to, to redo it. Yeah. What are your new three tips? Hmm. I think the first one is to really block them off everything. I think yeah. that was one of my old ones as well. Block them off everything. Mm. Fuck them. Mm. Like, what are you going to gain? Even if you, oh, I know where they are out. Like, you you shouldn't be there anyway. Yeah. Like, okay, he's out in this place that you always go to. Fuck that. Go somewhere else. Yeah. Even if you want, unless, unless you look fucking phenomenal, in which case, yeah, go in there for five minutes pre-drink and fuck off. Yeah. Yeah. And I will allow that. I'll allow yeah. that. Just do not speak to him. Just pretend he's not even there. Don't even look at him. Don't even look at him. Don't look at him. I agree. 100%. I think two is just have a real feel of yourself. Like, mm. go, right, what do I want from my life? Where do Even I want to be? write it down. Exactly. Even if it's visual, like, oh, shit, I want to change my hair colour like I did. Like, something that really just changes your whole vibe, your whole look. Like, I said to my friends, it's my villain era. But, like, dark hair's villain era. Oh. Yeah. I was in my golden blonde stage for too long. I thought, fuck it, I'm villain now. I'm a bad bitch yeah, now. Yeah, I'm a baddie now. Then I think that could also relate to work. If you're not comfortable where you're working or your job is, just change your whole environment. You're gonna okay. need change. Like you need to break that routine cycle. Okay. I think. Switch your life up a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Rock the boat. Yeah. Yeah. Like with anything in this world, if you're not happy with it, life's too fucking short, change it. Yeah. Like I'm going through something at the minute where I'm like, do you know what? Pain equals growth. Mm hmm. And if I'm not moving forward, I'm moving backwards. Exactly. And I don't want to stand still. So I'm fucking trudging the roads up that fucking mountain and I'm going to get to the top and probably flash my tits. Yeah. Anyway, I absolutely love your friendship with GK Barry. Oh, I'm actually obsessed. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> um, she, has, she got me through lockdown. She got me through a lot of shit. She doesn't know about. I don't think. She, I don't even think she knows who I, who I am. To be honest with you, she definitely. Does. But I fucking love her. Like she's just wild. She just doesn't care. She doesn't give a fuck. And I, she is honestly one of my closest friends. Mm -hmm. And she's exactly the same. Mm. Exactly the same in person as you want her to be. Yeah. As you expect her to be. And then some. Some mm. of the stuff obviously she can't talk about online. No, of course, you know, yeah. Personal shit. But same, yeah, she's yeah. exactly the same. Yeah. There was time. There was a time me and her went to a pink honey. Um, it was like an award ceremony in Manchester. We were in this cab together, and the owner, one of the owners of Pink Honey, was sat in the front. He'd met us for the first time that day. And um, we were just having an absolute 
chat of shit in the back. Like, you know, you just classic conversation yeah. with one of your friends where it just makes no sense. Makes sense to you. Yeah. And he just turned around and he was like, it's like my For You page is sat in the back of his <gasps> car. No, so he knew who you were. <laughs> oh, yeah, Fuck. he did. It was great. No, but it was so funny because we just started laughing. But honestly, one of the g- most genuine, mm. and my, every bit of success she gets. Yeah, she earns I, it. Yeah, and I, I actually feel amazing for her. Yeah. Like, to know she's doing that well yeah. and to know she's genuinely one of the nicest people people mm. who deserves it it feels mm. so like uplifting even yeah, for me definitely it gives you hope like yeah. okay i can do that if mm. she's that amazing and she's that talented well being a nice person gets you far in life 100 and a real person yeah i think nice is one thing but to just be able to be a relatable yourself like mm. she, she went on there and did a story about her fucking leaking a period for her white joggers how many times have you gone to a train station and thought fuck me I was my tampon in. Have I leaked? Have I done this? We've all been there. Yeah. Like, and she'll just say it how it is. And that's why we get on so well because we are so similar and we've mm. got such similar headspace. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, she's a real Well, what's one. it like being friends with her? Like, when surely you've got some funny stories or some wild memories of you and her. We do some weird shit. Like, shit we shouldn't even do. Like... <laughs> We will step into <laughs> events, like, because obviously we stand out like sore... Well, I don't know if it's obvious, but we stand out like sore thumbs because we are TikTokers, especially in a room full of, you know, classier Instagram yeah. girls. Very loud. Yeah, the music very in loud. the background. Yeah. Pop the phone on the windowsill, get good lighting. Absolutely. Um, we went to this Motel Rocks event once, and it was an amazing event, so no shade to them in any way whatsoever. But they left just AU bottles and, like, basically, pour, free pour. Pour your own drinks, right? Immediately, we're gattered because we're like 50 50, off you go. Back in that, we ended up doing an interview in the street. Oh, fucking pissed, saying oh. some absolute obscene shit. She was like, Oh, I had my first lesbian experience the other day, scissor sister. Did she? Yeah, well, on the when she was being interviewed, yeah, she was like talking all about that. And we were like, We came up the interview, like, fuck, what did we just say? <laughs> What did we just do? <laughs> that should be illegal. Don't interview people when they're pissed. I agree. But I think that's also genius. Yeah, true. Did she have a lesbian account? Yeah. Encounter? Grace is by. Oh, fuck. Is she? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, she's got a boyfriend now. But you yeah, she's You fucking go, bi. queen. Yeah, absolutely. You go, queen. I agree. I was always trying to hook her up at events, but it never really... I never was doing my job properly, but that's because mm-hmm. we probably looked like a couple ourselves as we were walking <laughs> around. But we came out of that event. We ended up getting lost. Found a man that looked like Max Brannan. <gasps> and he went, what do you two do then? TikTok. And we were like, funny you say that. We actually do. We actually do. And he yeah. was mind blown. We ended up at some burger van. Oh, it was just chaos. But like every time we go to an event, our key thing is mm. we have a brief beforehand and then we have okay. a debrief afterwards. Right. Every time. And we'll just go like, these are the expectations. This is what we're going to do. In terms of men? In terms of men, other influencers and things like that. We're like, going to see that person, going to avoid that person. Gonna take that person to the toilet. Yeah. Yeah. See what we can do. Yeah. And then we come back and be like, what the fuck was that? Every <laughs> time. So me and Nicole do that all the time, especially when we have sex with someone. I'll ring her straight after. Mm-hmm. I'll have sex and then I'll go into the toilet and then I'll ring Nicole and be like... Or I'll go six out of ten, and then she'll be texting me like mid shag, and I'll be like, "Oh, sorry, I just need to check my phone," or I'll just leave it, and then I just need to go outside, and then I'll go outside and I'll text her like, worst sex of my life, <laughs> worst worst sex of my life, absolutely disgusting. I was actually the reason that Grace got a boyfriend, so really? I don't know if anyone will hate me for that because. Wild Grace was a great stage, but... Oh, I, feel, I feel like she's still wild at heart. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. A bit more tamed, but I mean... Yeah. She's still Grace. She is still Grace. So in terms of, like, men and stuff, because, yes. like, you don't really speak about sex that much on your TikTok and stuff. Mm. Um, and obviously, this is a podcast where we love talking about of sex. Um, and dating, obviously. But what, what I really want to know is when you have sex with guys what stands out like what from a girl's point of view what really makes sex memorable dominance do you think think, i think if i have to throw you up against the wall what is this doing for me yeah like no you have to proper like put it on me lay on thick choke me yeah do you know what i mean Mm. like i don't want to be like ah give me a kiss then yeah go on then there was this one time i was seeing someone and i took him to my friend's birthday right but it was a family thing Mm -hmm. it wasn't like it wasn't you know you classic wild birthday it was a family event right fucking hell oh yeah tips up 
And um, this was the first thing I brought him around my friends for as well. Because she was like, everyone's bringing their boyfriends. I have a boyfriend, so I'll bring him. Fuck it. So I brought him along. Everything was going well. Next thing I know, we've ended up in the coat cupboard. The right? coke cupboard? Coke. No, Co- coat. Cloak. 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 Either one. Coats. Yeah, jacket. yeah, yeah. That one. That, not the coat cupboard. They didn't have one of those. Again, family event. <laughs> 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 if it was any other one, I could probably update you. But yeah, no, so we ended up there. All was fine. Everything was good. Um, I was like, oh yeah, just let me just get something out of my jacket or my bag, whatever the fuck reason we were in there. Next thing I know, I've been lifted up, getting off. It's all very getting heated in this. What, you're kissing someone? Yeah. In the, Some well, random kiss- No, no, no. The oh. guy I bought with me. Oh, okay. It's all getting very heated in this cupboard. Everything's going very well. You're in the cupboard? Yeah, in the cupboard, right? Of this family event. Fuck! Yeah, so then the door swings open. And my friend's sister has opened the door and behind her is a nan. Oh my God, and the dick was in mouth. Well, if only it was. <laughs> we, luckily, we hadn't got that far, but my skirt was definitely halfway oh, up my body. No! And I was just standing there with my hair all over the fucking shop, my lipstick all up my face, skirt on my waistline, oh. knickers out. And her nan I mean, was there. Maybe even a flap. I couldn't tell you, I was in a panic. Fuck. Yeah. And then immediately I'm shuffling this down. She closes the door. And she was like, Maddie, which is my friend's birthday. Maddie comes in. She was like, were you fucking in the coat cupboard? Oh, no. And I was like, no. No. We didn't get that far. We didn't get... <laughs> I would have. Fuming. Yeah, I was actually quite angry, Absolutely fuming. Your fucking nan ruined yeah, it. Right. <laughs> bastards. Yeah. How dare you get a coat from your own coat cupboard yeah. at your own party, exactly. you bastards. Yeah, so that was probably about... That was probably the most attractive thing anyone's done for me. In general, I think... Every, I actually had this conversation the other day with my friend Jack. I was like, I have rarely enjoyed sex with men. Really? Yeah. Have you ever gone the other way before? No, but I wouldn't rule it out. Okay. Yeah. So you, would you class yourself as... I'd say bi curious. Bi curious, okay. I wouldn't say... I would confidently say I'm bisexual, mm-hmm. but bi curious Still definitely. figuring it out? Yeah, working it out. I mean, you're still young. 23? Yeah. Yeah. Working it out. It's all right. But, I mean, the man ban... The men is what I tend to go for. Okay. But I think that's just because I self-sabotage. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like if I did go more t- towards women, probably wouldn't be cheated on as often. Yeah, probably. You never know, though. I believe that. I do actually believe that. Yeah. So, like, what I look for in a man when I'm having sex, what stands out to me would be eye contact. Oh, yeah. I love a bit of eye contact. However, you know sometimes when men do them, like, when they come? Yeah. And like the sperm is extracted and they're looking at you whilst coming. Yeah. Sometimes that's a little bit intense. It's intense. Too intense. Sometimes yeah. a bit, bit just, mm. But you know what I really fucking can't stand, right? And this is for every girl or man that is listening. You will relate to this, okay? Every man that I've ever had sex with, I will say to them, I'm just about to come. Whether they're looking me out or having sex with me, they will always switch up the position yeah. and start going faster or start going more crazier. And I'm like, no, you were you were doing it right the first time. Yeah. You don't need to turn into fucking Sonic. I agree. Do you get that? Yeah. But to be fair, I'm guilty of that as well. Oh. I am. It's like, because I'm gonna I'm come. Like, okay, ugh, okay, I was already doing it. You've distracted me now, so now I'm panicking and now I'm like, what else do I do? Where do I put it now? Finger like, in bum. Yeah. Oh. Do you know what I mean? I don't, I get a bit, I get a bit lost, but usually it's all right. Okay. But I mean, I don't go completely off piece. I don't start like throwing it back. Like I will just maybe change <laughs> rhythm because I've now been put off and I'm yeah, like, fuck, I'm like, fuck, right. where was my train of thought? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Now it's distracting me and now I think <laughs> the crush is on. <laughs> maybe I don't want you to finish. I don't know. I've forgotten. <laughs> fuck. Yeah. But I am guilty of that 100%. But I think yeah. I just get, it's the pressure. Yeah. It's the pressure is getting worse. <laughs> Oh my God, fuck's sake. <laughs> what are your views on OnlyFans? My views are... And would you ever do it? No. <laughs> There's the first... Okay. Would I ever do it? No. Okay. But that's because I have never been that confident in my body mm-hmm. to want to do it. Mm-hmm. I think my body my body is fine. I don't... Oh, shit. I don't have any problem with my own body. I just wouldn't want to display it to the world. Mm-hmm. Like even when I get intimate with guys... The last thing I want, especially when we start, start first start seeing each other, is the lights to be on or anything like that. Really? So you could not imagine me doing an OnlyFans. Like, mm-hmm. despite my confidence, that is somewhere I'm not confident mm-hmm. in the slightest. And it's probably my past involved as well. So yeah, that's why. Um, 
I'm not against it in any way, shape or form. I have girls that are friends with me that do it and they smash it. I even have boys that I'm friends with that do it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely fine by me. I think it's getting a bit saturated. Yeah. Because everyone Every is Every fucker's it. on it. And I think in that case, how do you make it more niche and how do you keep your audience? Mm. There's not many ways to promote it. Instagrams are being taken down left, front and centre. Well, have you it. seen Olivia Atwood's documentary? Yeah, I did. I What's it called fully again? watched it. Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember. Olivia Atwood has got a documentary on ITV mm. and she basically interviews people that are on OnlyFans. Yeah. And some people are earning up to 250k a month. Yeah. A month. They're absolutely caning it. Crazy rich. Filthy, Filthy rich. rich. So yeah, the, the the documentary of Olivia Atwood is called Filthy Rich, and I would strongly set, like recommend it because it is such a good watch. Like she's even in a room with people whilst they're fucking. Mm. The only thing I would say is, by hearing the figures, people immediately assume that's what they're going to earn, mm. and obviously that's not the case. No. Especially if you don't already have a platform. If you already have a platform. You're pretty much certain to make a decent amount from it. Mm. But if you're starting with no followers it's really hard to get it out there mm. because you can't, you have to give them specifically the link, right? You can't mm. search someone's name up or yeah. do much promotion otherwise. And to be honest with you, I think it could also instigate more body insecurities because if you do yeah. start up on OnlyFans and you don't get any traffic to your page, mm -hmm. You're creating content for the sake of not earning what you want to earn in the month. Yeah. And you're like, fuck, is there something wrong with me? Yeah. So it's always a question that I feel like people should ask themselves before wanting to do an OnlyFans. Mm -hmm. Will I... The pros and the cons, pros and cons are to everything. Yeah, of course. Do you course. know what I mean? You've got the pro, I'm pro potentially going to be earning a few more grand a month. The, the, the cons, but what if I don't? How will that affect me mentally? And how far am I willing to go? Mm -hmm. I always say before I get into a relationship or a friendship or whatever ship, right... What are my non-negotiables? Mm -hmm. Like, what are my boundaries, my healthy boundaries? And when will I know if they've stepped the line or not? Yeah, and I feel and like it's hard to blur when the definitely. money's so good. Yeah. Because you're like, oh, maybe I will push my own personal mm. boundaries. Because you will have to. Yeah. It's like any job on social media it does dry up for people sometimes quicker than others. Mm. And you have to work out how to keep that longevity. Well, longevity. That's the one. Longevity and relevancy. Because mm. as we said, there's new people joining it every day. Yeah. There's new people, there's younger people, or maybe with a, um, in terms of the male gaze, a better body type or mm. nicer boobs or mm. nicer vagina. All you like, all of this will be factored in. And yeah. then you might not be that person you once were. And okay, yeah. the, amazing, the money was amazing at first. But you're not used to it dropping down. It's like footballers mm. when they they get their hooked. career. Yeah. Listen, you get hooked. Hundred percent. And it's like when you're so used to earning a certain amount and then it drops, you're like fuck. And then it's almost like that. I need to fill that internal void. Mm -hmm. Where else am I going to get that income? Exactly. So that's why it's really fucking important to have your fixed boundaries before you start something like that. Mm -hmm. Because then if you do start feeling yourself sway and push past those blurred boundaries. At least then you can be like, well, no, Chloe, actually, let's check in with myself. Mm -hmm. Did I say I was going to do that? No, I didn't. Right. Fuck that. Anyway. Yeah, I don't know if I would join OnlyFans. I don't think I would. No. I mean, I do want to get into acting. Mm -hmm. So that I might I've, hinder you a bit as yeah, well. Yeah, there's quite a few people that have been, there quite a few Hollywood, um, not Hollywood, um, Hollyoaks actors mm -hmm. got cancelled oh yeah 100 percent for only fans because uh, my friend's an actor and you can't even have tattoos so if you can't have a tattoo in most of these roles majority mm. of you have to write it down even mm. if you've got a tiny little thing in your ass from malaga that says you know what's got here? a tiny clock yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 same shit you <laughs> can't even have anything like that you have to list every single thing so of course something like an only fan is is going to jeopardize potentially bigger roles yeah and i think if you were never going to do porn, if you never thought, yeah, I'd go and do that, I'd go and do fake taxi. Do you know what I mean? Mm. What is the difference? Unfortunately, there isn't much of a difference. Mm. I think people would just sort of, when you do it on social media, you don't really deep the amount of people that are there. It's like the same when you look at your following or how many people have viewed a video, it's just a number. You don't think, oh, that could be John who fits windows down the road. Like, you don't think about that. Mm. And I think if they were put into perspective more and less about the money and more about maybe the long-term effects, people would think about it a lot more. Mm. But I do think some people have done amazingly off of it and yeah. they can keep doing that and there is longevity to their career. But as you said, 
you start off doing something tame and it will escalate quite quickly mm. to keep up that income. Yeah, definitely. I think that's with everything though, isn't it? There's always a progression and it's yeah. always your choice, whether it's a healthy progression or not. Mm -hmm. I've got a question that isn't relevant for, to what we've been talking about. Okay. But I am genuinely interested mm -hmm. because I see something online and I was like, what the fuck? And I don't know if I've read it wrong or if I've looked at the video and got the wrong idea or not. But did you have beef with Jesse Nelson? Yeah. Was it personal beef or was it through like a middleman? It was not personal. Okay. Well, technically it was personal, but not personal. Right. Essentially, I went on my first ever date last year to Winter Wonderland. <gasps> Yeah, I'd never been before. Okay. Right, it was shit. Fuck It sake. was so bad. <laughs> Such an anti-climax. Oh, it was awful. I went with a guy, and he's an influencer as well, so people have worked out who he is. But mm -hmm. bo bottom line is, he we got on well as friends, but we should have never overstepped that line. Oh, God. Because we just didn't get on like that. I hate it when that happens. Yeah, and now we don't talk at all, which is fair enough, because... Yeah, he's lovely. We just not on, we're not relationship involved at all. Right, okay. Uh, yeah, we didn't have much to talk about. Anyway, he's very gym based. He's a gym guy, um, and he didn't want to eat in Winter Wonderland. He's got a strict diet, so the place he resorted to, <sighs> of course, Nando's. I oh, think if you've ever dated sake. a gym guy, you've exhausted Nando's to the point of no return. No. Yeah, so we went to Nando's, even though we were in anyway, whatever. We went to Nando's. We get seated, they put us downstairs. There was a bit of an ambiance in the room. Oh. I couldn't tell you what the the vibe was. But what does ambiance mean? Like, uh, like a vibe. Yeah, vibe. Oh. The vibe ambience. was just a little bit off, you know? Okay. Yeah. So we sat down. I got my lemon herb, you know, I was chilling. I was Same, that's what I eat oh, as well. Oh, yeah, I love it. Scranning away, having a great time. And he brings up a topic out of nowhere. Um, and he's a bit like, oh, did you see this Jingle Bell Ball thing with Jesse Nelson? Like, he actually loves Jesse Nelson. Right. Right. So I was like, oh, yeah, I saw it. I started doing the dance because this was obviously that time, you know, when she was doing all the arm, um, the bad, bad boy shit. Yeah. So I started reenacting it. I don't know much about Jesse Nelson. I've got nothing against her. Mm -hmm. I know she's been beefing Little Mix for about a year. None of my business. With I'm Nicki Minaj about. and all that. I don't give a shit. That's your beef, babe, not my beef. Mm. I'm back it. I'm not involved. I don't want beef. I yeah. want lemon and herb. I was just watching the TikToks. Yeah. That's my, my thing, you know? So anyway, I was giving it this, whatever. He then starts talking about something more serious, like her being a bit American commercialised, you know? Uh -huh. um, the blackfish and stuff and all that. And I was oh just God. sat there like a wet fish, mate. I was just looking at his, like, just staring at him thinking, I want to go home. Yeah. I want to go home. Like, I'm Please really don't not... slate other people. It's yeah, not attractive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, like, just, yeah, is it that deep? Like, yeah. leave her alone, you know? Whatever. Don't tell me she walked in. She did not walk in. She was sat there <gasps> the whole time. Where? Next to me. And you I, didn't notice I her? I did not notice her. Oh, my God. She was sat next to me. I did think there was a suspicious, suspiciously large amount of Selfridges bags to my left. Right. Right. There was two guys that I could see and one person <sighs> with a big coat on, no makeup, shades. I thought, you know what? It's, I'm next to Selfridges. What are the Street. fucking chances? What are? Jesse Nelson. Oh, Jesus, that's, that's right. how dramatic it was. It's what simple. are the fucking chances that Jesse Nelson is sat next to you what whilst your chances? fucking partner is slating them yeah and then because unfortunately the way we were sat is let's say that we're diagonal with each other now she, she was sat on the table facing me and i was facing her and he was to the side of her oh, so he would be like that. so she immediately looks at me not him oh. and goes why are you talking about me i was like whoa i wasn't talking about you i just did the dance i didn't know you were there and i just literally said oh my days i couldn't nothing else came out of my mouth I went, oh my days my eyes started to fill with tears i was just like oh my god because i could feel how bad she must have felt it's almost like secondhand embarrassment like fuck have i actually just because who the it's like, it's like me slagging off justin bieber or having a conversation about justin bieber than him being sat there yeah what the fuck it's unheard of yeah exactly it's fucking unheard of but also like as someone who is an influencer and has been slagged off by people in the past, mm. wrongly slagged off. <laughs> anyway, like I just sort of think, you don't know me and mm. I don't know her, so I don't have a strong opinion on anyone I do not know personally. Mm. So I was just getting involved with the dance group. It was a meme. Yeah. It was a meme. It was a meme. I was only She's being lighthearted. He was just chatting absolute breeze. So what happened? Well, that was pretty much it. I got up and left. I was straight oh, after. Oh my God. Because I went to turn to her to be like, I'm so sorry. Even though I hardly anything but just because i felt so much guilt listen right 
shit happens, shit yeah. gets said, and at the end of the day, you didn't direct it at her. You no. didn't know. She didn't know she was there. I think she thought I did know she was there, oh. or he knew, or th- anyway, either way, I thought she thinks. I think she thinks we knew. We did not know. Mm. There is no way because he lo- like as you said, he loves Jesse Nelson. Yeah, he knew she was there. He would have probably- said it. Never. I mean, it's hot topics though, isn't it? Everyone talks about hot topics, oh, yeah. whether it's good or bad. And to be fair, by the end of that date, we were running out of conversation. So that yeah, was, so was the only thing he had left. That's what it resorted as. Yeah, is he? Yes. Our beloved listener, our, our banging communer, like community, like. What, what's the short version of co- community? Communer? Yeah, I think. Yeah. What's wrong with it? Yeah. Someone's messaged us on Insta, banging right. with Chloe V pod. I have been with my boyfriend for three plus years. Mm-hmm. And we're very much in love. But I have so much anxiety that he'll want to go through a hoe. <laughs> a hoe phase one Not day. Just through a hoe, fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> I'm scared that he will want to go through a hoe phase one day. He was a virgin when we first met and he's in his mid-twenties now. He tells me he doesn't want a hoe phase, but I think about it every day. Please help me out. Okay, right. When a guy says they don't want a hoe phase, they're lying, in my opinion. Right. Everyone, I feel, has to go through a hoe phase. Mm -hmm. However... I think some people's hoe phases are more intense than others. I yeah. think some people just need some time to experiment, see what you know what's out there. Mm. I've never had a strictly ho ho phase. I've had a fuck it, I'll just sleep with them people. Why not? But that was just sort of because I was like, I need to. That was me finding myself a bit. As I said before, when I was on my mm. man ban, just yeah. chuck a couple of randomers in there. Yeah, fuck Why it. not? Um, but and then also when I was about eighteen, nineteen, I had a little bit of one there again. It was a sort of a Buckets, test the water. Mm. Doesn't necessarily mean you've got to throw it back to every Tom, Dick and Harry that sort okay. of come about. But there are people that have the hoe phase. I've got plenty of friends that have the hoe phases I've where it's like... definitely been through the hoe phase. Right, okay. Like, I've been through the hoe phase. <laughs> However, if I'm in a relationship and I'm happy, I feel like you need to just go with it. Mm. Unless he's given you reasons to believe that he wants to go through a hoe phase or he's having sex with you less. Listen, right? My honest advice to you would be what I would do, okay? I, let's just say, let's put ourselves in their shoes, mm-hmm. right? We're with a guy, been with him a few years, we're madly in love, but you're worried and you're fearful of the future. Listen, you can't control the future. Mm-hmm. You can't control people, places or things. So let go of that because that's just fear-based. What you do need to do, what I would do, I would buy different wigs. I would buy different underwear sets. Right. And I would just turn it into a joke. And I would be a different woman woman, every day of the week for a week. So when he comes home from work, Mm -hmm. you've got Sandra today, darling. How do you feel? And then just experiment with that. Yeah, that would work. Because you could be... That other woman. It's you true. could fulfil his fantasy. The only thing I would say, right, I have learned is... So, there's a guy that keeps popping up into my life. Oh, God. And he's been with someone for five years. He's not left her yet. They've not broken up yet. Oh. They're always, But she, he constantly comes. So, I... And I think they're a bit childhood sweetheart. Esque, but even today he was like, "What do I have to do to get you to reply to me?" I'm like, "Fuck off!" Please. You've got a girlfriend. Do you know what I mean? And I'm trying to see people that actually don't have girlfriends. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I never want to be a mistress to anyone. No. Um, but I'm like, please fuck off. Like I've told her before. I've told her in the past. Like he's messaging me, and she's just doing she nothing about it. Shit. She stays with him. Oh god. So so I mean, your experience is that that they do have hope. That I think my worry for this person is not that I want to endorse this. Is that although you're, I think there's a reason that's in your head, as we say, gut feelings. Yeah. There's a reason why that's even going through mm. your mind is because you think he's up to something that he's not. And I do believe for blokes to only ever have one girlfriend and to never have sex with anyone else is very abnormal. Like from what my personal experience is, mm-hmm. and I think in British culture, it's very abnormal to yeah. have a guy who's lost his V plates to you and stayed there. 
like and never gone diverted off the path. So could that, off the back of that, mean that maybe he is a nice person? Yeah, it could he be. stayed with her because he's not that guy. But then going back to what you said a second ago. I just, I'm, I can't trust any man. <gasps> I can't trust any man. I think, okay, yeah, he might just be that one anomaly mm. that I've never heard of in my whole entire life. Uh, what are the chances? Yeah, I've never heard of that in my life. What's anomaly mean? Anomaly, like what, the odd one out. Right. I've never heard of anything like that. Well, what's making you think that he will want this hoe phase? Like what you said, there's that's always I mean. an initial seed that's been planted. So my advice to you would be, ask yourself, mm. do I think that he would cheat on me? Are there any signs that are visible? Talk to your friends about it. Ask him. Communication is key. Yeah. He's not always going to tell you the truth. But body language, always mm. do it in person, never over the phone. And you need to know with yourself, just so you don't keep on bringing up the past and being fearful of the future, because that also might steer mm. him into other girls. For fuck's sake, I've already told you, I don't want to sleep with anyone yeah. else. He might be genuine about that. Yeah, he might be. So if you do keep on persisting with it, then he might just think, oh, for fuck's sake, I'm just going to leave you. Because now you've put it in my head. Mm. I do want to experiment. But the only worry that I have is what we just said is why is it even coming into your head? Yeah. Why is it even there? Question it. Like, okay, he's never lost, he's never slept with anyone else. Have mm. you slept with any other people? Because surely yeah. not. If you sound like a bit like childhood sweetheart vibes yeah. where you've been together since you were teenagers, mm -hmm. you've survived COVID, loads yeah. of relationships fucked off after exactly. that. Yeah, maybe you're just overthinking it. Yeah. That could also be a thing. I've but got high hopes. Yeah, so do I. I just don't trust men. No. So that's why my initial thought was, yeah, could Fuck, be. Fuck, yeah. Yeah. Doubt it, but... But believe in yourself, sister. Believe in yourself. Just communication. Just pump yourself up a little bit. Why would he want to cheat on me? I'm a bit... I'm a boss bitch. Not a bitch. I mean? I'm a boss bitch. <laughs> so hype yourself up. I really hope that you have a conversation with him. Deep... Dig deep within yourself and ask yourself, why am I thinking this way? Is it because it's a gut feeling? But um, yeah, let us know on the banging Instagram page, banging with Chloe V pod, if you do get it resolved and what the outcome is, because we would love to recap and um, see what happens, because mm. I'm a nosy bitch. And if you did end up cheating, revert to the first part of this video. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because Izzy tells us how to get over someone that has cheated on us. Yeah. So... You're blessed either way. Exactly. What we love doing on this podcast is a game that is tailored to our guest. Amazing. Okay, so we're just about to play a game. And this is the trust issues version of Chubby Bunny. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So we've got marshmallows. And they're only tiny ones because we couldn't get any big ones, right? But which is kind of a bonus, really, because then we can ask more questions and stuff. Um, you have to put a marshmallow a few marshmallows in your mouth for everything you've done. Right. Okay? Okay. I'm gonna do it with you. Okay. Because I'm fucking starving. <laughs> <laughs> you have to swallow them. No, I know, I know. <laughs> but I'll, I'll, I'll swallow them after. Listen, I'm a swallow gal. <laughs> okay? Right. Never have I ever tracked my boyfriend's location. Oh, absolutely. Who hasn't done that? If you haven't done that, you need to fucking do that. Yeah. You have lived. I've done that a few times. I have not lived. I've got a technique of putting them to the left. Oh. Cause I've got, that's because you might just, like pad your cheeks out. Yeah. yeah. Two, went through your boyfriend's Instagram followers. Oh my God, I do this all the time to see who he's followed. <laughs> They've changed it, haven't they? They've updated it so it's gone back to normal. Has it? Yes, yeah, so you can see... When if whoever's at the top two they've most recently followed. Yeah, I, kind of, I spoke about that in my last episode. Yeah, fucking fantastic. Yeah. I haven't had to do it yet. But Gives I'm, me an excuse to be psycho. Oh, yeah, I absolutely will do it, but I haven't had to do it since, like, a few boyfriends ago. Fuck up this accent, it's one of the marshmallow. Number <laughs> <laughs> mm. three, told your boyfriend you can't have women friends. I've done it once. I haven't said overtly you can't, but I'm like, can you stop talking to her as much, maybe? I feel like... Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to be like, yeah. I feel like every relationship differs. Mm. With my with my ex, he was friends with a friend that he'd previously slept with. Mm. Yeah, this no. technique isn't working for me. Same with my ex. He was the exact same. I'm accidentally swallowing them as I'm going as well. Oh, no! But... My ex was exactly the same. He had far too many girls who were 
friends. They weren't your friends. So you didn't you ever really speak to them. Yeah, they all have had their your willy in their mouth. So therefore, yeah. that's not your friend. That's a fuck buddy. So yes. please allow it. Fuck buddies and friends are mm. different, okay? I Is agree. she coming to family functions? No, get the Absolutely fuck out not, of here. Absolutely not, do you know what I mean? All right? Does she know your, your nan? Does she know Mo? No. I knew Mo. She doesn't know Mo. It was Mo. My ex's mum. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm accidentally swallowing I've them. swallowed them all. I've no! got none of them. Oh. <laughs> They're slipping from my really gappy teeth. It's a peak. <laughs> it defeats the purpose of the game. It does, yeah, it does. It really does. <laughs> As you said, I'm a swallower. I can't help oh it. Oh my god, from Oh my god, from Right. This is disgusting. <laughs> Number four. Hmm. Stayed up until your boyfriend came back for a night out. Oh, I've stayed yeah. up. Yeah. Or I, I meet, meet him. No. One, before me and my ex broke up, I literally was like, if you don't come home, I'm running this knife down your car. Fuck And off. then I waited in... I, yeah. <laughs> then I waited in his bed, like, bolt upright for him to come home. That's, a, that's enough reason to, to be arrested. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't actually going to do it, but... You had to let it. him know. Oh, yeah. He was like, yeah, I'm 45 minutes away. I was like, well, you can't be 45 minutes away. It's not I'm actually... Fucking... Yeah, you won't have a, your Mercedes is on one amp. You yeah. need to be careful. You, you need... know what I mean? Listen, if you burst three tyres rather than four, oh, they can't I'm claim playing. on their insurance. Oh, and we already yeah. know this girl, gang, don't of we? we already knew this. Right. Number six. Marshmallows ready for fuck's sake. They're like melting in my mouth as I'm going along. Same as me, that's why I keep swallowing them. Why do you look gorgeous still? What the fuck do I look like? <laughs> you do not look. Don't look bad. I mean, I'm not going to lie. It does oh. look like you've got a wisdom tooth being taken does out. Does it? <laughs> yeah. Made. Oh, this is a good point to plug the YouTube. Banging with Chloe Veach. You can see the visuals as well. That's very true, because if you're not viewing the visuals, what are you doing? Yeah. This is a lot. Six, made a fake dating profile to find your boyfriend on a dating app. I didn't have to. People, <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't have to. People fucking sent it to me. They were like, oh, here's your boyfriend on a dating app. I was like, brilliant. Thank you. Oh, my God. Tosses. I've done that once before. I've it's never like, been led to that. To I see fair. he had a dating app on his home screen. Mm. We'd been dating for months, and I was like, hmm, so I downloaded Tinder. Didn't find him. Oh, oh no. Number seven. Fucking hell. <laughs> Text me. Mm. Text me. Oh, cold. I'm good. I'm going to die. What do you mean to do it? <laughs> Texted or called your boyfriend constantly while he was on holiday. Oh, holiday. Oh. He didn't go on a holiday while I was with him without me. Well, none of them Okay. Have. But I would, so I'll put it in there. I, don't I, I have done. Oh, yeah. I even had a go at him once because he didn't reply to me, but he was in the air. He was flying. Right. Okay. Don't blame him. Fuck him. Oh, is that it? Is that the Is that it? I think we're back to the start. So, so yeah. TikTok, yeah. yeah. Bring it out. Tag yourself. If you already want to know what my socials are, well, you're missing out, I must admit, because we do chat breeze over there as well. Um, less about sex, more about men being trash. Um, but, yeah. Give it a time. follow. Yeah, give it a follow. <laughs> I'm looking at it like I don't know my own name, but it is Izzy Oakley yep. and Izzy C. Oakley on Instagram because death to Instagram that took it down. Big up, big up. But, yeah. <laughs> That was amazing. Thank you so much for having me. I've talked about my mum. Thank you so much, Izzy. Thank you for having for me. For coming on. You have been a fucking delight to have on here. Thank you. Your personality. If anyone doesn't know, get to know. Please follow her on socials. And, um, yeah. I love you. Thank you. I love coming on. It's great. Lovely meeting you for the first time. I know. How mad is yeah. that? Watch, follow, subscribe, and please rate us. <laughs> Until next time. Don't be silly, wrap your willy. Don't be silly, wrap your willy. Banging with Chloe Beach is part of the Eve Podcast Network and a Forever Dog production. Executive producer, Tracy Soren. Development executive, Mariah Nicholas. 
Senior Producer, Palama Kaufman. Producer, Ewan Newbigging Lister. Post Producer and Theme Song, Brian Hevron Smith. Cover Photo by Greg Bailey. Forever Dog Productions is Joe Cilio, Alex Ramsey, and Brett Boehm.